Dean and Tyler Listel are registered investment advisor representatives. Investment advisory services offered through Brokers International Financial Services, LLC, member SIPC. Brokers International Financial Services, LLC, and Secure Retirement Solutions, LLC are not affiliated companies. It's time for Secure Retirement Solutions with your hosts, Dean and Tyler Listel, fully licensed retirement specialists from Secure Retirement Solutions in Green Bay. Now, Here are your hosts, Dean and Tyler. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. Tyler and I will discuss topics that affect your retirement, such as investments, income planning, Social Security, and much more. How are you this morning, Tyler? Good morning, Dean. I'm doing well. How about yourself? Good. Thank you. Thank you. Today, we're going to talk about the importance of having a retirement roadmap. Um, We look at this, and and, and we try to to say it's the same thing as uh, when you're traveling. Uh, If somebody tells you to go down the road 15 or 20 miles, turn left at the barn, and then go a couple miles, you just feel a little bit uncomfortable. You feel a little bit more secure if you either have a map or a GPS. Of of course, you plug in a GPS. It gets you where you want to go. You don't have to think a whole lot about uh, uh, how you get there. You just end up there. So we look at that when it comes to your retirement. We'd like to see everybody have a retirement roadmap. And to set up a retirement roadmap, it's really a financial plan. And we've said this in in, in many of our, our previous shows. Uh, we create financial plans for anybody who comes through the door. They're complimentary. But what it really does is it takes the burden off of you having to worry about how much you can withdraw, uh, what your expenses are going to look like, when your expenses phase out, what's your, your return Things like that, you start plugging those into your retirement roadmap, and you're going to feel much more secure going forward with your retirement. So a couple things we want to talk about today. We're going to look at uh, creating that retirement roadmap and following it in your 40s, 50s, 60s, and later. And we're going to talk about everything from accumulation to income to preservation. So to get things started, we're going to talk about, first of all, creating that retirement roadmap in your 40s. Uh, 40s would be the sweet spot. It's where we would really like people to start looking at potential retirement. You get into your 40s, you have spent a lot of money uh, starting a family and maybe creating a a, a legacy. You also want to have maybe a mortgage in place for the house that you have. But you also now want to start getting a little bit more serious about your retirement because believe it or not, you know, 20 years uh, from 40, uh, it comes around in a hurry. So we'll start planning around your 40s. Tyler, where do we normally start when you're uh, putting together that roadmap in your 40s? Yeah, Dean, now the 40s is an age group where you're still young enough to enjoy life now, but you also need to look forward to the future and plan for it by implementing your retirement roadmap. So um, again, the earlier the better, but definitely in your 40s, you can enjoy life now. You're young enough, you're healthy enough, you have a family, a house, um, but you also want to start looking down the road toward your retirement at this point. So Uh, The number one thing in terms of retirement planning in your 40s is to try and pay off all the smaller debts, excluding the mortgage. Now, if you're able to pay off all the small debts, put money into retirement and pay off the mortgage in your 40s, more power to you. That's great. But most people, they're going to start by paying off any type of smaller debt. And for example, credit cards, uh, school loans, car loans, different things like that of that nature, because at this point, you know, you may have went to school and racked up some pretty significant um, student loans. We want to get those paid off in your 40s, ideally. Um, another thing is your credit cards. Uh, people carry credit card balances with them at all stages of their life, whether it's you know 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and then into retirement. But ideally, if you can get any type of debt that you have on your credit card paid off here as well, we want to look at that. And then also car loans. I know same thing with car loans. People get car loans at all different times, but maybe... Um, your first job out of college, you got a really nice car and you have a loan on that. We want to get that paid off in your 40s. So first thing is to tackle all those smaller debts, get those paid off, whether you do it from the smallest balance first or the largest uh, interest rate, whatever it may be, write them down and get those knocked out. Um, That's going to be the number one thing in terms of retirement planning in your 40s. And then after that, the next step is to gradually increase your retirement account contributions until you work your way up to 15% of your household income into retirement accounts. So oftentimes, and keep in mind, that's not something that's going to happen overnight. So most times people are contributing at this point to up to a match in their 401k or their retirement plan through work. They're contributing to an IRA here and there. So for example, if right now you have a 401k and they match 
5%, then you're contributing that 5%. So you're getting, you're getting the match. Um, well, what ideally what you want to do is you want to work your way up to 15% in your forties. And then you're going to be pretty well set when you do want to retire down the road. And again, it's not going to happen overnight. It's, it usually takes a few years to cut your expenses and work your way up to that 15% of income going into retirement accounts. Now, with that said, the next question then becomes, okay, I'm confused. There's a ton of different accounts out there. Which ones should I contribute to? And we kind of have a, a step-by-step process here. And we recommend first and foremost contribute up to the match in your 401k if you have a match. So if you have a match, that's free money. For example, if they if your employer matches four or five percent, you first put your first four to five percent rate into that 401k because it's free money. They match whatever you put in. Um, so up to the match first, then go to Roth IRA accounts. Now a Roth account is where you put money in, and you don't pay any taxes on what you put in or any of the growth. So it's completely tax free when you start taking money out. It's the one account that you can put money in and not have to pay any taxes on what you put in or any of the growth of the account. So um, then you want to max out your Roth accounts. And then if you're still, if you still haven't reached or hit that 15% household income level yet, then you want to go back into the 401k if you're still able to at that point. So it's going to be um, contribute to the 401k up to the match first, then go to the Roth, Roth IRA accounts, then back to the 401k if you're still able to at that point. Okay, and also remember, by the time most people are in their 40s, they typically have had uh, one or two jobs maybe in their career. They've gone from one company to another. Uh, it used to be, you know, 50 years ago, people would come out of college or come out of high school, work that one career job, and they'd stay there their whole life. Now, I think the average person, by the time they hit 40 years old, I think they have three and a half uh, different career jobs. So having said that, you probably have a couple of 401ks that you might have started with a previous employer. They're sitting out there, and you're really not paying attention to them. We typically refer to those as orphan 401ks because they're treated that way. They're just sitting as an orphan, and they're not being managed uh, correctly from your standpoint. Uh, That's not to say that uh, they're doing poorly. They could be doing very well. Sometimes by uh, taking your eyes off it and taking the emotion away, uh, many times your accumulation does increase. But let's just say that they're with a previous employer. You have the opportunity to roll over that 401k. That is a process of moving that 401k into uh, an IRA, and it is tax-free. You're going from one custodian to another custodian, so you're not taking any proceeds, so it's a tax-free event. And uh, many times we recommend that. Now, remember with a 401k, if you're rolling it over in your 40s, it's a great opportunity that you might look at also converting that into a Roth account. As Tyler said, Roth accounts, especially in your 40s, if you can accumulate uh, substantial money in Roth accounts in your 40s and 50s and start taking it down in your 60s, 100% tax-free, you'll be a very happy person. So look at those 401ks that are with previous employers. Um, look at the possibility of, of rolling those over into an IRA and maybe going through the, the process, which is called a Roth conversion, uh, moving them from a traditional IRA into a Roth IRA. Yeah, and Dean, with that, with the Roth conversion, what you do is you pay the taxes now when you convert it, when you convert your IRA or your old 401k into a Roth IRA, pay the taxes now and let it grow tax-free for the rest of your life thereafter. So um, really the big advantage to doing that in your 40s or earlier is that if you pay the taxes now, then you have so much more time on your side for that to compound and grow tax-free. And also keep in mind too, when you're in your 40s or younger, you're also probably going to be in a lower tax bracket than if you were in your higher earning years like your 50s. So you're going to have to pay less tax on it now when you convert it as well. So um, Roth conversions are a big thing. And I oftentimes have clients who come in and, you know, they might be in their early 40s and have $3,000 in a 401k from an old employer here and another $2,000 from an old employer at a different company. And that right there makes a perfect opportunity to take those two, combine them, convert them into a Roth IRA and you have a $5,000 Roth IRA that you can start contributing to right there. So um, Roth conversions, if you can in your 40s, if you have old 401ks or IRAs that are kind of lingering out there, so to speak, take those, pay the taxes now, convert it to a Roth IRA, then let it grow tax-free while you're still young and you have that time on your side to let that tax-free growth compound. 
Okay. And the last thing when we're talking about planning for retirement, creating your roadmap in your 40s is, again, you know, I just go back to get a financial plan created. Um, If you're in your 40s and you have a financial plan in front of you, it's going to be very easy to stick with it compared to if you don't have that roadmap or the financial plan in front of you. And the other thing, too, is as you start getting into your 40s, especially your late 40s, you want to try to minimize your spending, okay? You want to try to stay away from some of those big ticket items that you might have incurred earlier, such as a home. And you want to get out of the uh, the bad habits you have with spending, which is typically credit card abuse. So try to get those credit cards in order. Look at reducing some of your big ticket spending and get a financial plan done. Okay, now we're going to go on to the 50s. Here's where people really start to get serious uh, about their retirement planning. Why? Because you do see the end game. Uh, You see it coming uh, close. I mean, it's it's coming upon you uh, quickly. So your 50s, you're starting to really look at retirement. Here's where you really want to try to, uh, you know, max out your retirement accounts. It's very, very important. And you want to get serious in your 50s because typically they are your highest earning years over your whole career. So most people make more money per hour or salary in their 50s than any other uh, time in their life. So that's when you want to get serious with putting together your financial plan and also starting to salt away that money that you're going to need when you do retire in your 60s. Yeah, Dean, and then uh, so in your 50s, really, like you mentioned, the first thing, try and put as much as you can um, going along with our guide here in the 40s. You know, you work your way up to 15% now when you're in your 50s. You're putting away that fifteen that fifteen percent of household income. You're maxing out your Roth IRA accounts, um, your retirement account. You're putting a lot of money away. The next thing is to try and have your home paid off early. So any extra money that you can put toward the mortgage in your fifties could result in tens of thousands of dollars of interest saved by not letting that mortgage payment linger around. So, um, again, the faster you can get that paid off, if you're just paying the the min or the minimum monthly amount. It's going to stay there for a lot longer, whereas if you can put a little bit extra toward that each month, you can save thousands of dollars of interest over the years by getting that thing paid off early. And then once you do pay off your house early, you can then use that money that was going toward the mortgage payments for other things, like, for example, putting even more toward your retirement accounts or maybe building up an emergency fund. Now, a lot of people, they're putting money away, but maybe they want to have a little bit more in savings in case something were to happen or they want to budget for paying cash for a new car or a new roof, whatever it may be. If something pops up, you can use that money toward an emergency fund or possibly even helping pay for your child's college. Um, and then possibly to even taking a nice vacation here and there. Treat yourself a little bit after paying off that mortgage. So really, if you can get that mortgage taken care of, you don't have that payment anymore. You can then use the extra money that was going toward the mortgage to do many other different things that you don't even know possible right now if you're strapped with that mortgage payment. So uh, with that said, it takes the average family about five to seven years to pay off their home early when they first start paying more than the minimum monthly payment. So really, that tells me that if you commit to it and you're paying more than the minimum amount, it really, you get that momentum and you're not going to stop. So that's a good thing. But always remember that Paying off the home, which for many people is going to be their largest debt they ever occur, it's more of a marathon. It's not a sprint. You need to be disciplined with it because it's going to be a huge balance. You can be putting more than the monthly amount in there, and it looks like you're hardly even making a dent. And that's where you have to be disciplined and know that over time, if I get this thing paid off, it's going to free up so much more of my time, energy, money to go toward different things as opposed to this debt. Okay, and and to summarize in your 50s, though, too, uh, the last thing you really want to do is You want to get um, all of the retirement funds and investments together and just make sure you're aware of how they work. So, for instance, your Social Security benefit. Uh, A lot of people don't realize this, but um, every day that you work is really going towards your benefit. You're, You're accumulating more credits and it's helping you there. Go and get your statement and review it. Make sure all of the years are there that you've actually worked. Um, Sometimes there are mistakes on those statements. And if you don't know where to find your statement for Social Security, you can go online to ssa.gov. That is the Social Security Administration website. And you can download your statement, review it, scrutinize it a little bit, make sure it's correct. The other thing is if you are fortunate enough to have a pension through your employer, go to your employer or go to the custodian who holds the pension, who holds the money in your pension, and ask for an illustration. Tell them you would like to know, okay, I'm starting my retirement planning now. I want to find out how much is my pension actually going to pay out 
once I do reach the year that I want to retire, which might be 59 and a half years old, 60, 65, 62, but get an illustration. Then you can see how much fixed income is going to be coming in. Pensions and Social Security are referred to fixed income. Fixed income means it come in each and every month. It's something that you create the foundation for your retirement plan off of. And then the last thing is uh, your retirement assets. If you haven't talked to your financial advisor, make it a point to talk to him or her. Get out there and find out how do these investments really work. Have they been paying attention to your needs as you start to uh, get closer to retirement? Ask them to explain you know, whether you think there's too much risk in your portfolio. Not enough risk. Uh, is it going to pay income uh, substantially along with my fixed income? And again, challenge them to come up with a financial plan. It's important to do, especially as you uh, are, are coming to the end of your 50s and looking at getting into your 60s and retiring. And the last thing is start building up cash, okay? We talk about investments all the time, but cash is very important to accumulate to prior to your retirement. It's very hard to build up cash in retirement because you no longer have payroll coming in. So start building that up in your 50s. Okay, we're going to go on to the 60s now, your retirement planning and your retirement roadmap in your 60s. But before we do, we're going to take a quick break here. You're listening to Dean and Tyler Listel, investment advisors with Secure Retirement Solutions located on Allied Street in Green Bay. For a complimentary review of your current investments, or if you have questions, please call them at 920-347-9888 or go to their website at srsplans.com. Okay, now we're looking at retirement planning in the 60s. Um, Okay, congratulations, you made it. Okay, we we tell people you've saved all of your life. People tell you to save, save, save. You've saved it. Now what? Uh, How do you know how to withdraw? How do you know that you have the right amount of money in the right buckets? We talk about bucket planning a lot uh, on previous shows. What we mean by that is we have three buckets of money we like to stage uh, investments in for people when they retire. The first one is uh, safety. We want to have your fixed income. That is your Social Security. That is your pension if you do have one. And some other uh, safe money, such as cash positions and maybe some fixed annuities, we like to stage that first. Second, we need income-producing investments or retirement plans. And then lastly, we need growth. And it doesn't necessarily mean when I say lastly that it would be your smallest bucket. Growth could be one of your largest. It could be your smallest. It depends on what type of uh, investments you hold. It depends on your risk. It depends on how much debt you have, your health history, and so on. So what we're going to do now in our 60s, we're going to look at uh, things such as uh, times that we have various expenses coming up. There's a lot of deadlines when it comes to retirement, and we want to take you through some of those deadlines and some milestones that we're going to be talking about. So, Tyler, let's look at you know just some of the, uh, the things that people have to be aware of when it comes to deadlines and expenses in their 60s. Yeah, good, uh, good points, sir, Dean. Um, really, when it comes to retirement planning in your 60s and beyond, First thing is to make sure that your investments are positioned properly. So we've had it before where we've had a clients come in, a couple who was um, you know, in their mid-70s and they had an all-stock portfolio. Now, stocks are they carry the most growth potential, but they they're also the riskiest. So someone in their mid-70s probably shouldn't be in an all-stock portfolio because they're too risky. If the market takes a downfall, they're heading right down with it and probably even more. Um However, on the flip side, we've also had clients who came in and they had all everything in a savings account where they were making hardly anything. Well, sure, you're not going to lose money, but if you can't even keep up with inflation, then technically over time you are losing purchasing power. So really, you want to make sure that your investments are positioned correctly. You don't want them to be too risky, but you also don't want them to be too too conservative. So um, we help our clients plan for retirement in terms of making sure that their investments are positioned properly. Okay, and with that, you know, Tyler talked about, you know, uh, not too risky and not too conservative. Those are the two swings we typically see. And uh, uh, what we recommend in a situation like this, going into retirement, again, there's a phenomena that happens. It's called no more payroll. Once you quit working, uh, payroll doesn't come in. So it's it's very hard to get through some of those valleys when the market goes down if you have no more money from your payroll going into your 401k. So your investments and your retirement plans need to stand on their own two feet. What we do uh, with many of our clients is we'll create a risk-managed portfolio. It's an active managed account, and um, we have the ability to build up cash in that portfolio. 
uh, to take some gains off the table. And then if the market does start to go down, we have cash built up that we can then use to buy uh, good equity positions and mutual funds or ETFs at a low or lower and then be able to get out of the hole. So risk managed portfolios are something you should talk to your advisor about. If you have any questions about them, we we uh, would love to talk to you. Just give us a call. Um, our phone number is 920-347-9888. Uh, Tyler and I are with uh, Secure Retirement Solutions on 3040 Allied Street in Green Bay. Give us a buzz. We'd be more than happy to tell you how a risk managed portfolio might uh, work for you. Okay, Tyler, what are some of the other things here when we talk about expenses in our 60s? Again, most people aren't really prepared for a lot of the expenses and deadlines. Yeah, and one of the other things in your 60s is to first and foremost beware of health care costs. So it's estimated that an average 65-year-old couple will spend over $240,000 in total throughout their lifetime um, on total health care expenses. So that's everything from various premium payments to co-pays, um, to actual out-of-pocket expenses for different surgeries, stuff like that. So beware of healthcare costs that can really add up over time. Another thing to be aware of is remember to sign up for Medicare Part A and Part B and get a Medicare supplement at age 65 or when you're done working and no longer covered under group health through an employer. And really many people have the misconception that Medicare Part A and Part B is sufficient enough for health coverage in retirement but really, Medicare Part A and Part B combined cover about 80% of health care expenses. And, and there's been people that told me, you know, well, 80%, that's good enough. Well, when you have a $100,000 surgery, um, you still have to pay 20% out of pocket. So that's $20,000. So really, it's not good enough um, for most people, at least. So what you need is to fill in that gap with a Medicare supplement. So that's something that people forget about. But you want to also look at that, make sure that you have all your bases covered when it comes to Medicare Part A and Part B, as well as Medicare Supplement. Um, so again, healthcare costs, beware of those when you're planning for retirement in your 60s. The other thing to look at is Social Security. So Social Security, it's the largest source of income for many retirees um, in the U.S. So really, you want to plan wisely when it comes to the the time that you start taking it. So um First off, the earliest you can start is age 62, and the latest you can take it is 70. Now, don't wait any longer than 70 because it doesn't grow and you're just leaving money on the table if you don't take it by 70. Um, but keep in mind, it grows by about 6% per year each year you delay from 62 until your full retirement age, which is going to be either 66 or 67, depending on when your birth year was. And then from your full retirement age until 70, it grows by about 8% per year that you delay. So uh, keep in mind, every year that you can delay, it's going to grow. And for example, I've got a little example written down here. If your benefit is $1,200 per month at age 62, you could wait until 67 and collect $1,600 per month. So that's going to be $400 per month more if you wait five years to take it. Or you could wait until 70 and collect over $2,100 per month. So um, the longer that you wait, the more you're going to get. But keep in mind, there's no one one size fits all approach with Social Security. If they're, The only time that could happen is if everyone knew when they're going to die. And no one knows that because there's always going to be a break even point. But really, it comes down to a number of different things. And ultimately, we tell people, you take it for one of two reasons. It's because you want to or because you have to. Some people have to if they run into um, a health emergency or they can't find work. Other people have saved up enough that they can basically take Social Security whenever they want. So ultimately, it comes down to sitting down with someone and planning that out. We take our clients through a financial plan where we can help them model out when is the best time for them to take Social Security. So um, really what you want to do in your 60s is Make sure you have that plan. You want to know when you're going to take Social Security. Plan for it because it's probably going to be your largest form of income throughout retirement. Um, with that said, another big key point in terms of planning for retirement in your 60s and beyond is to work with an advisor to help you take withdrawals from your account. So, you know, all throughout the roadmap here in your 40s and your 50s, everyone tells you to save, 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 make sure you build up your retirement funds. But in our experience, really, we found that not too many people help tell you the process of how to withdraw the money when you need them. So 
you may have saved up money in a 401k, a Roth IRA, maybe even a non-retirement account. So you have all these different accounts here. How in the world are you going to figure out how to withdraw from them? Well, we like to stage it based on the tax classification of the account. So the taxable non-retirement accounts first, we like to we like to take from those first and foremost because you're taxed on those anyway, whether you take the money or not. We figure you might as well take the money because you're taxed on it anyway. Take from that first. Then from after that, do your 401k, your IRA, your 403b, the pre-tax account. So you're going to have to pay taxes on any withdrawal you take from that. And then lastly, we recommend withdraw from your Roth IRA simply because it's tax-free and you want to let that defer and grow the longest just because you won't have to pay taxes on it um, at all. Sure. And in addition to what Ty said about a Roth account too is is also remember that uh, we typically like to see the Roth account staged later in your retirement uh, for the obvious reason that Tyler said, and that is it's going to accumulate more um, growth or growth potential if you stay away from it for a longer period of time. But also, um, as you get older, of course, the likelihood of passing away uh, you know, becomes more prevalent. So what happens is as you grow older by pushing that Roth account off until the last uh, to be withdrawn, if you were to pass away, that goes on to your beneficiaries 100% tax-free. So it's part of the legacy planning, too. The only other time that we would really uh, recommend that you start taking Roth accounts earlier compared to the other um, tax classification of your investments is right now under the Affordable Care Act, your health insurance premiums, if you need health insurance when you retire, are based on income. And when I told you in your 40s and your 50s to start building up cash, that's uh, part of the reason. Second reason is you can also use Roth accounts that show up as zero income also in addition to cash to keep your premiums down. So your reportable income will be down if you're taking Roth and cash in addition to maybe your Social Security. So you should be able to afford your premiums better than if you didn't take Roth or cash accounts at this point. Good point there, Dean, and especially in, in today's day and age that we live in where health insurance um, after you retire, but before Medicare age, there's that little gap in there where health insurance can be so darn expensive. A Roth IRA withdrawal can really help combat that. Um, One last thing that I wanted to mention um, would be it's actually past your 60s. So it's 70 and a half years old. It's uh, the year that you turn 70 and a half, you have to take what's called an RMD or required minimum distribution. So this is where the IRS, they make you take it from any type of pre-tax account. So from a traditional IRA, a 401k, a 403b, um, reason being is that so they can collect the taxes on it. But what happens if you don't take it is they penalize you 50% of what you should have taken. So a very big penalty. Um, You don't want to forget to take your RMD because, again, if you do, you don't want to pay 50% to the IRS. So uh, remember to take that RMD at 70 and a half years old. Okay. That's all the time we have this week. See you later and hope you'll join us again next week. We'll see you next week. You've been listening to Secure Retirement Solutions with your hosts, Dean and Tyler Listel, fully licensed retirement specials from Secure Retirement Solutions in Green Bay. To get more information from Dean and Tyler, contact them at Secure Retirement Solutions on Allied Street in Green Bay. Call 920-347-9888 or visit them at srsplans.com. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Brokers International Financial Services, LLC. Member SIPC. Brokers International Financial Services is not an affiliated company.